My name is Philip Hoffman. Um, the film that I've made is called Slaughterhouse. I think this is my third visit here, uh, at, but I, I think my I think even Ozu played here in, in the 1980s. So, been for if if it was around for that long, <laughs> I think it was Festival Nouveau Cinema. Um, Slaughterhouse is um, it's a film that grew out of an installation. I like to talk about that because that's where it sort of started. Um, and that was a, a installation piece for a show called Landslide, uh, which Janine Marcheseau curated. And it was in the Markham Museum, the kind of like pioneer village type space, and 35 artists were given um, uh, access to this museum. And I got the slaughterhouse, which is, um, you know, a 19th century barn small barn but it had all the remnants of that was in an old slaughterhouse so uh, the cutting block the huge um, uh, container that they put the body of the animal in and so on and so forth so um, I had to make an installation out of that the way that that uh, worked was that um, I used a little peak holes uh, on the outside of the barn and the participants or the, um, the audience would have to go around the, uh, the barn and look through the peak holes and they would um, see projections inside. So it's a little bit like, you know, kind of this sort of uh, intimate moment at each peak hole. Uh, several threads run in different places uh, in the barn. Uh, the films are projected on the objects like the cutting block or like the container uh, and so on, barn board. Um, and um, uh, you, you know, the idea is that the audience has to kind of weave together the film. Within the film, um, there's several threads, uh, several, several narrative stories, uh, and it spans sort of the history of uh, sort of colo from colonial times uh, when the land was taken away from Aboriginal people. Uh, by the government of Canada to uh, to the present, uh, uh, my own personal story. Nana Bawigwa was a, a land rights activist, and uh, she was a native woman, married a white man, uh, and um, essentially, when uh, she left her land to do some missionary work, um, you know, uh, distance away. She returned and the land had been surrendered and she lost her property and spent the rest of her life uh, trying to get her land back. Um, so, you know, this is sort of the first melancholic moment, I'd say. More than that, it's a tragedy uh, in the film. But I sort of go through several of them. Another one is uh, Michael Schmidt, who's an organic farmer who lives up in Owen Sound. People know him in Ontario because he um, uh, he's a... a a spokesperson for uh, pa unpasteurized milk. He makes unpasteurized milk, but he's been basically raided and uh, has been in the courts for 10 years. You know, he, he principally thinks that it's okay to, um, for, for unpasteurized milk, it's very healthy. But he has that trouble with that. But anyway, he talks about uh, the barns falling down and what it means. The reason that I'm interested in this subject, um, food production uh, and how it Obviously, it relates to my family history, but um, I really feel that um, it's this mass production of meat, uh, of of food that uh, creates the problems. The you know inhumane um, uh, treatment of animals, um, all those kinds of things start to happen as you uh, do something in mass production. I mean that that works in everything in the world. I think um, so. Um, one thing Michael Schmidt says is, um, you know, these barns fell down. They were built with a lot of hard work and sweat, but uh, maybe for the wrong purpose. And, you know, that was kind of a question that I, I thought of while I was making this film. Maybe for the wrong purpose. Well, then what is the right purpose? And perhaps the right purpose is uh, more community-involved um, production of food. Um, I think that kind of thing is, is being developed now. Um, you know, uh, throughout the world uh, where we're starting to think a little bit more of where our food comes from and how we, it gets to our table.